everybody, and welcome to the 1044, a weekly webisode and podcast from the editors here at CCJ, Overdrive, and Truck Parts Service. I'm James Gillette, and my co-host on the other side is Jason Cannon. Most likely, everyone in our CCJ audience has read our coverage of new developments in autonomous vehicle technology and paused to think, how could this impact or even disrupt my business, my job, and the lives of drivers? One area you might not have considered is how the technology powered by artificial intelligence could take the legal system for a ride and change, for better or worse, the cost and coverages of commercial auto insurance. All of it is a little bit unsettling. We'll dive into that and more. There are a lot of unsettled legal questions surrounding advanced driver assistance systems and the artificial intelligence under the hood of autonomous vehicles. The real question is, who's in charge of the vehicle, or who's to blame in the event of an accident. CCJ Senior Editor Aaron Huff recently spoke with attorney J.W. Taylor of Taylor & Associates, who's an industry thought leader and a transportation law expert about these and other questions. Aaron, what were your main takeaways from that interview? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank J.W. Taylor for being a friend of CCJ. We're We're fortunate to know him and his transportation law partners. Uh, The trucking industry is well known for having regulations that cover just about anything you can think of, but autonomous vehicle technology is an area where the court system and government agencies have been silent to date. We don't have driverless trucks on the road yet that meet the SAE level 4 and level 5 definition, but we've also never seen a court case where a plaintiff had to prove that it was the vehicle, not a human driver, who was negligent. But I'm sure that day will come. So let's jump into this. Uh, JW, can you help us understand why emerging emerging autonomous vehicle technology could could turn the legal system on its head? If you look back at the legal system, Aaron, as you know, and we've talked about it many times, our legal system is set up based on what we call tort law or, or negligence. And what you're really asking me is who has the negligence when it comes to this advanced emerging technology. And to understand negligence, you have to understand there's a duty. And for there to be a claim, there has to be a breach of that duty and damages, Aaron. So it has to be those things. And that's what our tort law system is based on. So there has to be assumption that there is a duty. And who assumes it? Well, the regulatory scheme, as you mentioned, case law, and it's obviously very important to insurance, isn't it? So yeah, Aaron, there, there is a, a vast amount of information and in, in history when it comes to autos. Yeah, that makes sense, JW. We've had case law for auto accidents for more than 120 years now, but has anything emerged yet for autonomous vehicles? Fast forward to your point uh, about 2018 and autonomous vehicles and, and the history of Uh, tort law, negligence law, all the way through automobile liability to 2018 in Phoenix, where Ms. Hertzberg uh, was uh, walking her bike across the the road, right to the path of what? An autonomous vehicle. Uh, And unfortunately, that was a fatality as well. And accidental death, this was settled uh, prior to trial. So to answer your question, when you look at ADAS, and the AI and the autonomous vehicles. No, Aaron, today we don't have case law or a lot of information pointing to how this is going to be handled in the courts. And you know, it, it, I think maybe what you're asking me is, again, who's at fault? Whose negligence is it? Is it the human driver? That's what we've been based on all these many hundred years of uh, well, technology, but automobiles as well. Is it the OEM? Is it the manufacturer now with these autonomous vehicles? Or Aaron, is it it the actual software provider? And how do you sort all that out? So to answer your question, um, you know, more to come. Yeah, okay. So, uh, and also JW, you you point out that equine law or horse law is a model that could be applied to future future court cases that may involve autonomous trucks. Could you tell us more about that? But I was asked to take a look at the impact uh, to insurance and the legal system. And, and Aaron, that some of the questions you're asking about, well, what's going on with regulatory? What's going on with case law? Is there anything out there is addressed in the SAE 
edge report. And so when I was looking at it and, and looking at these 1800 claims and uh, the development over the last hundred years, I was trying to find, or we were trying to find something to compare it to. And we ended up there comparing it to equine law, horse law. And the concept there was a horse is what? Intelligent. Um, and it has horsepower, much like a vehicle. But what happens when you're relying on the intelligence of that horse and the horse spooks or the horse uh, reacts in a way that we did not anticipate? Uh, there was an, a, an edge type scenario that we weren't prepared for. Who's liable for that? So we compared it to equine law. And uh, the equine law, as you can imagine, is um, in different places depending on uh, the jurisdictions and the facts surrounding the cases there. But that was an interesting study. Yeah. D JW touched on the legal implications of autonomous vehicles and has some thoughts on new and emerging transportation models that will leverage a community of AVs to take safety and efficiency to the next level. In the future, again, convergence of technology, the AI, uh, the autonomous, but right now, making these things work seems so hard. And how do we keep from hurting each other uh, as we're crossing the street? And so uh, I encourage your listeners to, to take a look at uh, Noblis, N-O-B-L-I-S, I believe, Pieces of Eight, which a lot of folks haven't heard of. I found it fascinating. I call it, or I've actually seen it called Robot Derby. And it's, this is the, it's really orchestrated uh, autonomy. Go something like this, and I hope no one's please forgive me. Uh, I'll do it in layman's terms, but basically, you're coming to an intersection here, and you got all of this technology that we're talking about autonomous um, ADAS. So, you come into having all of that information together, but is it orchestrated? Is it efficient? And so, if you got an autonomous vehicle, a truck, pulling a load that needs to get to the port. And we got all these other trucks and cars coming to this intersection. And if in the blockchain where the information is protected, I can say, look, I really need to get my load to the port way more than you need to get uh, to the salon or, or get, to, get your hair cut or whatever. So I'm in the blockchain going to pay for, if you will, the access to go straight through and everybody else will understand that. I go through, you share in, in that, uh, in me paying more for that, getting through that. And that's a Bitcoin type idea, but the pieces of eight is that. And so what's happening, try my best to sum it up, is we have this autonomous technology, this AI talking to each other and deciding amongst us who needs to go first. And by the way, what's really interesting about it, if you really look into this, maybe our streets, maybe our, our, our intersections look nothing like it looks today. It might look like a bunch of confusion, but it's really not. Mm -hmm. And we're going, I'm going through that intersection with my 80,000 uh, pound load and I get to go first. Everybody knows it. We never touch each other. I get the port on time. So, um, that's some of the technology uh, I think is really interesting that's out there presently. JW, I'd like to ask how insurance companies are evolving with this technology. Uh, will insurance companies have uh, to become big tech companies to underwrite policies for SAE level four and SAE level five trucks? Well, the short answer is yes, insurance companies are going to have to evolve with the emerging technology. And I think the markets, the industry is prepared and willing to do that as our insurance companies have always stepped up uh, for us, especially in the transportation or logistics side of things. And how does that uh, evolve? How does that develop? I, I don't know. Uh, there's some thoughts out there back to you know, who's at fault. Um, and it, it may be a situation where insurance companies come into programs instead of having, like we have today, you know, these different lines of insurance get commercial general liability, you got auto liability, you got cargo liability, you got property damage, uh, PD, all those types of things. And you have products liability, all that, that maybe uh, these insurance companies, instead of writing these single lines, do what uh, we might call it a wraparound. In other words, 
you buy a car, a vehicle, and insurance is part of that purchase and it covers everything. Is that how it's going to be? We don't know. Uh, is the industry working on it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We, uh, the industry recognizes it's going to be hard. Um, it's gonna be different, I should say, to look at who's at fault. Uh, was it the driver? Was it the OEM? Was it the software? But uh, you may have noticed that Volvo has actually come out, gosh, I think that was 2015, Aaron. I don't know where it's developed from there. But Volvo said, look, we're going to be totally liable if our autonomous uh, vehicle causes the crash. What does that mean? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think the idea there is when it's in, when, when the vehicle's in full autonomous mode that uh, Volvo would step up. But what, how do you define that? And so there's still a lot of moving parts, but far from that. But, uh, but so some OEMs are looking at it in that way, but I think blockchain and the evolution of being able to orchestrate mm. this data uh, may help the insurance companies understand what that means. Well, thanks everyone for the fascinating discussion. I'm sure there will be many more people involved in finding the right answers for the legal technology and insurance questions uh, that we've highlighted here. Uh, and I'm sure J.W. Taylor will continue to be one of the leading thinkers on these issues. Uh, and you can find our coverage uh, ongoing on autonomous vehicles at uh, ccjdigital.com. As always, you can find the 1044 each week on CCJ's YouTube channel or in your favorite podcast listening app. Uh, if you've got questions, comments, criticisms, or feedback otherwise, please hit us up at 1044trucking at gmail.com or give us a call 404-491-1380. Until next week, everybody stay safe.